Welcome back to our episode of Off the Shelf. I'm our son, Timmy G, and this time what we found off the shelf was... Lady Snowblood, released in 1973, based on the manga of the same name. This is a revenge samurai film. Um, is also inspiration to Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill, if you've heard of that. Uh, this film is a uh, pretty good yeah i'd say i liked it liked it quite a lot and um you know i would recommend it if you're a fan of samurai films you know action films you know and uh just all around you know stuff like that very very enjoyable and um well i'm just gonna jump right into it the film has a lot of blood fountains a lot of very red there's a lot of blood in this movie i mean obviously there's Blood is in the title, so if there's blood in the title, you expect there to be blood, and yes, there's a lot of it. And it's great. So the gore effects are great, and, um, but it, the movie isn't all about the gore, you know? That's not the what the movie's all about. So, um, the plot. Let's get into the plot now. Um, the main character, the titular Lady Snowblood, is, she is on, like, a, like a revenge you know, she's on a, she's on like a tour of vengeance, you know, she wants to get revenge on these people who murdered, who murdered her father, and, um, you know, abused her mother, and, you know, did all these terrible things to her family, and her mother, like, swore on her, like, the mother swore on her daughter, like, that her daughter would get her vengeance, would avenge the mother, right? And then eventually she does, but then throughout the movie, she discovers that two of the people are already dead, and she only ends up really killing one of them. Well, two of them, but I'll get to that in a second. And uh, basically, she's like, the whole movie, she's just trying to kill these people, track them down and kill them. Um, but then, uh, near the end of the movie, you discover that one of them that you thought was dead earlier isn't, Right? And there's this writer that she made friends with, um, who's actually, this is his dad, one of the people she wants revenge on. So, yeah, she wants to kill him. Not the, the, the guy, but the dad, right? Because, you know, she wants the vengeance. But then, I'm going to also give you a little detail here. Uh, she, one of the people, the only person she killed before this, who she got to, he had a daughter, and the daughter also is, you know, mad that she killed her dad, and that comes in later. So eventually they get to, like, a ballroom. Uh, she ends up killing a double of this guy and not actually killing him because he faked his death before and he was going to fake his death again. But then uh, there's, like, a secret room. She, like, breaks a mirror, and then there's, like, a secret room, and she chases him, and the the guy Ryu, or is it right? I think it's Ryu, I think. And they, like, chase him in different directions, and then, like, he's got him confronted, Ryu's got him confronted, and then, um, fortunately, Ryu dies, like, he gets shot a bunch, and then she has to, like, stab through Ryu to get to the guy that's pinned up against the wall, she stabs through him, but eventually, he, like, ends up shooting her and all the commotion, and then he falls over, like, falls over the balcony and dies, eventually, she, like, wanders out into the snow to the outside, and then the daughter of the guy from earlier stabs her, then runs away, um, and then she dies, even though there, there's a sequel, so I guess I'll have to watch the sequel to see how she survived all that. But um, she most likely died originally, or maybe not, but she does survive, actually, somehow. But it, it appears to she, that she dies. No. But I thought the ending was fitting. She got what she wanted. You know, she got her vengeance. You know, I don't really know if she want, she needed to survive. I don't think she really was, like, you know, she didn't need to survive to get her vengeance. She just wanted her vengeance. You know, she didn't need to live to get it. Uh, which I uh, think is a pretty fitting end to the movie. And I'm, uh, I'm pretty hopeful about the sequel. Hopefully the sequel is uh, just as good. You know, at least just as good. Or just a good movie, good sequel, hopefully. But 
I did get a lot of enjoyment out of this movie. A lot, a lot of enjoyment. Um, and that mainly comes from, like, the actions well, well choreographed. The movie is just overall well made. It's really pretty to look at. The shots are great. Colors are great. And uh, overall, it's just a really well put together movie. Uh, good acting, you know. Pretty good narration and stuff like that. Just a uh, good movie. Some of the most enjoyable parts of this movie for me were, you know, the plethora of blood fountains. You know, fucking, somebody gets a paper cut, <laughs> blood everywhere, you know, and just like, like, there's a, the gore is great, like, you know, chopping hands off and heads and shit, it's great. Uh, there's even the part where, like, one of the people she wants to get vengeance on, like, they hang themselves because they don't want to, like, let her get the satisfaction of killing her, right? And then, like... Like, I, I don't know, I don't really know why, maybe just to, like, do it. Like, she just kind of chops her leg off. She just chops her lower half off and just, just blood everywhere. It's not, like, like a full-on, like, flood, but there's, like, it's just, like, a literal, like, blood sprinkler coming out, and it's great. Uh, the blood everywhere, like, red, like, the whole thing is red. I remember there was a part where she, like, cut a guy, and, like, the blood splattered over the camera. Right, and there was some blood on the camera. Uh, they used a lot of blood, in the, fake blood in this movie, and it was great. You know, I love a blood fountain. Who doesn't, really? You know? And that was a really enjoyable part of the movie. Now, uh, the colors in this movie. The color, talking about the blood. Uh, the blood was red. Very red. But that wasn't the most... That wasn't just the colorful stuff in the movie. The movie was just very pretty to look at in general. You know, the uh, version that we watched, the obviously the Criterion, Restoration, whatever. Uh, it was very, very well done, and the colors were just, they popped out, and the movie was really pretty to look at. Really, really good. And it's just a really beautiful movie, and if, you're, if you can appreciate that kind of stuff, that's also another reason to watch the movie. I mean, just looking at the movie, it's beautiful, so... That's also another reason to watch the recommendations. It's just a pretty film, you know? Very, very pretty. And um, also, obviously, the actors are doing a great job um, doing, like, putting in their all. And I think, uh, I mean, obviously, it's an acting movie. But, yeah, I do think also another segment I enjoyed about this movie was, like, the whole ending segment with because I think as a, I think the movie was the the way it ended was the only way it could have ended, I believe, uh, even though in the sequel she apparently survives. So don't know how that's how that work how that's gonna work, but I guess I'll just have to wait and see. Um, maybe they'll just be like, oh, it wasn't as bad as it was, you know? Maybe it wasn't as bad as it looks. I don't know. Maybe they're gonna do some bullshit like that. I don't know. But I like the way the movie ended. I think it made sense for her character since she got vengeance. She killed two of the people that wrong that like she needed to kill, and then she died. I mean, she did. She got her objective complete. I mean, did she need to live? You know, I mean, she didn't. I don't think she needed to live. I don't think she thought she needed to live either. After her objective was done, what was she gonna do after that? You know, I mean, her whole purpose basically was to kill these people. You know. So, it makes sense for her to die after she did, like, her whole life's mission, basically. Like, her life was basically complete in that moment. You know, she got closure, in a way. Even though she only was only able to kill two, two is better than nil. You know? I don't know. And, uh, yeah. If you're a fan of, you know, Asian cinema, uh, samurai movies, action movies in general... I think you get a lot of enjoyment out of this movie, and even if you're not, uh, if you don't really like, like, gore movies or, like, movies with a bunch of blood, I guess this isn't for you, but I mean, I mean, to each their own, but I love that shit, so, all for me, none for you, so, but, I do recommend it for, even if people are, like, a little wary about this movie, um, I would recommend it to just, you know, give it a shot, give it a chance, you know, watch it in your own time, and, uh, you know, Hopefully you'll get enjoyment out of it. And uh, with all that being said, I think I'd give this film an 8 out of 10. Very enjoyable, very good movie, and I would recommend it. And so, guys, I think I said everything I needed to say. I think I said my piece. 
So guys, I hope you like this video. Share your friends, subscribe, turn notifications on, comment down below on how much you liked it. And I've been running time HD. Signing off. Aw oh, shit, I fucked it up.